அனைவருக்கும் வணக்கம் திஸ் இஸ் சயின்ஸ் வித் சாம் அறிவியல் அறிவோம் நான் ஐரோப்பாவில இருந்து கிளம்புறதுக்கு முன்னாடி சில ஆய்வுக்கூடங்களை உங்களுக்காக காட்டுறதுக்காக சில ஆய்வுக்கூடங்கள் நான் எடுத்து வீடியோ எல்லாம் போட்டிருந்தேன் அந்த மாதிரி ஒரு முக்கியமான ஆய்வுக்கூடம் அதிநவீன ஒரு லேசர் ஆய்வுக்கூடம் அதை நான் ஒரு வீடியோ எடுத்திருந்தேன் அந்த டைம்ல என்னால போட முடியல அந்த சப் டைட்டல் டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் அதற்காக அந்த வீடியோவை நான் உங்ககிட்ட ஷேர் பண்ணலாம் அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு தான் இந்த வீடியோ அந்த ஆய்வுக்கூடத்தில் நான் போய் அந்த விஞ்ஞானியை நான் மீட் பண்ணும்போது அவர் வந்து அதை பற்றி எக்ஸ்பிளைன் பண்ணார் அது எப்படி வேலை செய்யுது என்ன பர்பஸ்க்கான நான் எதிர்பார்த்தது வந்து அந்த விஞ்ஞானி ரொம்ப அடிப்படையில் இருந்து சொல்லுவார்னு சொல்லிட்டு ஆனால் அவருடைய நேர்காணல் ஒன்று எடுத்தேன் அவர் வந்து மெதுவாக கிட்டத்தட்ட பத்து நிமிஷம் அவருடைய நேர்காணல் மட்டுமே ஓடிச்சு அடிப்படையில் அவங்க என்ன பண்ணுறாங்க அப்படின்னா அந்த மூலக்கூறுகள் வந்து ஒன்னோட ஒன்னா சேருது மூலக்கூறுகள் இப்படி சுற்றுது அப்படின்னா ஒவ்வொன்றுக்கும் ஒரு ஆற்றல் இருக்கு இந்த ஆற்றல் என்ன இரண்டு மூலக்கூறுகள் உன்னோட ஒன்னா சேரும் போது மாலிக்யூல்ஸ் ஒன்னோட ஒன்னா சேரும் போது அந்த ஆற்றல் வந்து ரொம்ப குயிக்கா நடக்கிறது இது வந்து செம்டோ செகண்ட் இந்த மாதிரி ரொம்ப வேகமா நடக்கிற ப்ராசஸ் லேசர் வச்சு கண்டுபிடிக்கலாம் அப்படின்றத அவங்க பண்ற ஆராய்ச்சி ஆனா அவர் வந்து அது ரொம்ப லீலமா பண்ணதுனால அந்த நேர்காணல் மட்டுமே பத்து நிமிஷமா நான் சொல்ல முடியாதுனால அவருடைய நேர்காணல் ஒரு இரண்டு நிமிஷம் மட்டும் நான் சொல்லிட்டு அந்த ஆய்வு கூட தான் நான் உங்களுக்கு சுத்தி காட்டலாம் நான் நினைக்கிறேன் அந்த கீழே வந்து அந்த சப் டைட்டில் மட்டும் தமிழ்ல போடலாம்னு நான் நினைக்கிறேன் அந்த ஆய்வுக்கூடம் அந்த அளவுக்கு ஃபுல் அண்ட் ஃபுல் அவங்களுடைய ஆராய்ச்சியை முழுமையா அவங்களால காட்ட முடியல ஏன் அப்படின்னா அந்த லேசர் வந்து அந்த டைம்ல வேலை செய்யல அந்த லேசர் சுவிட்ச் ஆஃப் பண்ணதுனால தான் எனக்கு காட்ட முடிஞ்சது ஆனா அந்த அந்த ஆய்வுக்கூடம் எப்படி இருக்கும் ஒரு அதிநவீன ஒரு பிரம்மாண்டமான ஒரு லேசர் ஆய்வுக்கூடம் எப்படி இருக்கும்ன்றத நீங்க ஒரு பார்வைக்காக நீங்க அதை பாருங்க என்னால முடிஞ்ச அளவு அந்த இன்ஃபர்மேஷன் சில பேருக்கு அந்த ஆராய்ச்சி விஷயமா தூண்டலாம்னு நினைக்கிறேன் அதோட இன்ஃபர்மேஷன் வேணும்னா நான் டிஸ்கிரிப்ஷன்ல கொடுக்குறேன் சோ முதல்ல அந்த ரெண்டு நிமிஷம் நேர்காணல் அதுக்கப்புறமா அந்த ஆய்வுக்கூடத்துடைய விசிட் வாங்க அந்த வீடியோ போய் பாக்கலாம் Nandri just tell me where you're from originally and where you did your PhD uh, I'm Jao so I'm working as a scientist in LIB mines here myself I I'm originated from Bangladesh I studied I did my bachelor's in Bangladesh masters also in Dhaka University then I did my PhD in France then uh, I was working as a researcher in South Korea and I was working as a assistant professor in Poland then finally i came to alibi mines i'm working as a scientist here right now so i work for a uh, structural dynamics group here so when you say structural dynamics basically we study uh, atoms molecules materials so it's a big range basically so if we want to say a bit more deeper what basically you study atoms molecules and uh, other materials there are two aspect of dynamics one is whenever in molecules for example when the atoms forms a molecules or molecules have some certain uh, rotational states or vibrations so whenever some reaction happens how this dynamics affect actually so how we can control the motions of the atoms or molecules these are the main aspect so another aspect of the dynamics that we study is we call in our language the ultra fast dynamics of ions and electrons how it goes i can just give you why the import, what's the importance of this kind of work i can just give you some example like our human eye we have some limitation for example if some objects move faster than some certain time we cannot really distinguish two objects separately one example can be fan this ceiling fan or table fan whatever you have so before the fan starts you see that there are three four wings but when it moves you cannot really distinguish that there are three or four wings the reason is we are incapable to detect because it's moving so fast so this is even in a millisecond time scale for example we are not capable to watch now let's consider for example we have some fast camera we can really catch up this how much faster there are limitations you just imagine with your mobile phone or with your camera if somebody is really running and you're just trying to catch up the picture of this running motion with high resolution camera maybe you can you can get up to some certain level but you just give a shadow kind of things you cannot really distinguish so this is still in the fraction of second in the millisecond level for example whenever we talk about atoms or molecules or materials 
the internal dynamics of the constitu constituents is not in a millisecond or microsecond level. So these dynamics are happening, these motions are happening in the picosecond or femtosecond time scale, which is 10 to the power of minus 12 second or 10 to the power of minus 15 second time scale. Just imagine molecules, for example. Basically, this send these atomic gases at very low temperature and high pressure, it forms clusters. From there, actually, you can try to extract the dynamics of how material formation happens and how intercolumbic decays and all other processes, actually, the state dynamics you can study from that setup. So in this setup actually, uh, here is the, we, we have helium droplet setup, we have the helium gas in Z to the nozzle, and we have the cryocooler, by which we can go down to 4 Kelvin temperature. So around 10 Kelvin to 4 Kelvin temperature you form the cluster. So this is the source chamber, mm -hmm. you form the cluster, then this is the oven chamber, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then you can dope with different materials, different mm -hmm. atoms, different materials mm -hmm. or different molecules mm -hmm. here. Then finally the cluster goes to the interaction chamber. Okay. So this is the interaction chamber. Ah. So the basic idea is we have proper detection mm -hmm. to study this ultra-fast dynamics of ions and electrons. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So we have the detection now, detector mm -hmm. now on the top. Uh -huh which is called VMI, this uh -huh. Velocity Net Imaging Spectrometer. Uh -huh. With this one, we can check the electrons, ultra-fast movement of electrons mm -hmm. and ions. Uh -huh. And we can visualize them, we can image them actually. And uh, you have to do that acquisition mm -hmm. actually, based mm -hmm. on that and the reconstruction of the uh, total values. These are the carbomolecular pumps. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You need to maintain very, really very high level of vacuum. Mm -hmm. Inside the chambers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So right now, as you see over there, the mm -hmm. pressure level. Yeah, ten to minus seven. Yeah. So this is the pressure in the interaction chamber. Uh -huh. This is the pressure in the source chamber. Right now, helium gas is flowing, uh -huh. and this is the pressure in the oven chamber. Uh -huh. So yeah. basically, in this E1 experimental hall, we study excited state dynamics of atoms, molecules, and material science. So we have few methods to study this. One is optical method. We can do pure optical spectroscopy, where you can study the molecular dynamics or excited state dynamics. So you can do time result measurements. For this, there are different techniques, how you can study this one. Other thing is, these studies we do by using different optical sources, which are basically ultra ultra short laser pulses. So by using this ultra short laser pulses, for example, we have one fundamental laser, then we create different secondary sources. This secondary source can be, for example, simple second harmonic generation, third harmonic generation, or high order harmonic generation. For example, you have 800 nanometer is a driving laser. Then you can create 2D first harmonic, 30th harmonic. So like this way you can create this harmonic orders and depending on that you can see actually which, which is the photon energy you can create. So this photon energy, so specific photon energy is very important because when you go deep inside atoms or molecules, so you have to be very precise which excited state dynamics you want to study and which photon energy you needed. For this, this high harmonic generation helps a lot. So we have two ways of secondary sources. We have high order harmonic generation process. Besides, we have laser based plasma access. So, by high order harmonic generation process, you can ge generate extreme ultraviolet and this vacuum ultraviolet, extreme ultraviolet, and soft X rays also. What is the wavelength of extreme ultraviolet? Can you give the number? It's uh, still 20 nanometer and above. Okay. Mm -hmm. So with the plasma access source, you really need to use high energy driving pulses. Then by the plasma X-ray process, this plasma generation process, it gives you X-rays, which is which gives you hard X-rays. Like for example, uh, if we say 
in terms of photon energies from the high order harmonic generation, you are getting photon energies from 20 electron volt to 120 electron volt, for example. But with the plasma X-ray sources, you can get 8 kilo electron volt, 10 kilo electron volt, 15 kilo electron volt, this kind of hard X-rays. So with this one, you can really study bigger uh, crystal structures or bigger macromolecules to study the structural properties. Mm -hmm. So it's not only doing structural properties, because people are doing this kind of structural properties in other big facilities, which are located in Germany or in France. But they don't have these pulse sources. The difference is, if you have pulse sources, for example, how sharp is the pulse source? Mm -hmm. So it, it defines you what kind of time resolve measurements or what kind of time resolve excited state dynamics you've been studying. So our fundamental laser is really short pulse, which is simply 15 to 20 femtosecond pulse. So we are expecting very short pulses also as an X-ray. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So which will give us some excited state dynamics in the femtosecond time scale okay. or picosecond time scale. Right now, for example, there are hard X-ray sources mm -hmm. in Flesh, in Hamburg, in Germany, which can give you time resolution like in the picosecond time scale. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But with our sources, we can go up to femtosecond time mm -hmm, scale. Mm -hmm. So this is a uh, this is the exception in comparison to other uh, big facilities. Okay. So which is 100 millijoule and 15 femtosecond, one kilohertz pulses. And this all entire vacuum chamber that you see, this is for the beam transport. Because this high energetic pulse, you cannot let it propagate in the air for longer distance. It will have some uh, so this SPM, the self-focusing effect, surface modulation, all of this effect will be there. So it will deteriorate the pulse proper pulse quality. So for this, we need to transport the beam in vacuum, where we maintain usually 10 to minus 5 bar or 10 to minus 6 milli millibar. Right. It's in the millibar level of vacuum. The beam is coming here, and here, for example, we distribute the beam inside this chamber because we have different end stations for different experimental purposes. So here we distribute the beam, which defines which end station will take which beam. And then we come to here. The beam transport, the beam transport comes here. When the beam comes in this chamber, we take some part of the beam in this table. This is a diagnostic. Because when we do the measurement, we have to measure online some properties. Like, for example, what is the near field and far field of the beam? And what front sensor is here? You need, to, you, need, you need to see the pointing of the beam, quality of the beam, if there is some extra divergence introduced in the beam. All of this you can sense from this diagnostic step. Mm -hmm. So this is simply done. So we have, uh, we can monitor the energy. We have calibrated the power, the power meter. We have calibrated spectrometer to online monitor the spectrum of the pulse. And we have wavefront sensor to check the wavefront of the beam. And we have near field far field imaging. Mm -hmm. So in the near field far field imaging, it gives you few senses. Like for example, you can see the pointing of the beam from day to day if it's shifting or not. And second thing is, if the beam is coming with some divergence effect or some other effect, you can immediately notice from this imaging system as well as from the cell, from the wavefront sensor and the diagnostics that we have here. Kind of facilities and to, for the beam transport also. And what is the user area? Where is the user area? User area is on the other side. Ah, still okay. in the beam transport area. Okay, okay. So here, for example, some part of the beam goes to this black area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This black area is the optical spectroscopy and station. Okay.